well, let's define uh, the res potential of order alpha denoted by i alpha. Okay, we defined i alpha of f x um, equal to a constant t alpha integral r n f y absolute value of x minus y to the n minus alpha dy and we can say that this is equal to k alpha convolution fx okay and uh, this constant c alpha it's equal to pi minus n over 2 true alpha minus alpha multiplied by the gamma function of n over 2 minus alpha over 2 um, all this over uh, gamma of uh, alpha over 2 okay 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 now his theorem it's the Hardy Littlewood Solomon, uh, sometimes called Hardy Littlewood Solomon inequality or lemma. Okay, so um, let alpha between zero and n one is an equal mp then q infinity with 1 over q is equal to 1 over p minus alpha over n okay so then first if f is in lp then um, the integral um, I alpha f x okay is absolutely convergent almost every x in R M okay and second if uh, P uh, is uh, greater than 1, then I alpha is of type PQ. So it means that um, I alpha for norm Q is less than equal than a constant that can depend of P of alpha and norm F B okay so okay okay so let's see the proof of the first um we can split the kernel k alpha in k alpha naught and k alpha infinity where um k alpha naught is k alpha if an absolute value of x is less than equal than epsilon and zero if an um, uh, absolute value of x is uh, greater than epsilon and uh, k alpha infinity is going to be well k, k alpha x minus k alpha naught x and n epsilon is a positive constant to be determined so we get that i alpha of f of x is less than equal than k alpha uh, zero convolution f uh, absolute value plus k alpha infinity convolution f. 
okay so this will be let's say um one this integral and this integral will be two and uh, we can say that the first convolution is a um, is a convolution of a of the function k alpha uh, not so um, k alpha not is in a one okay and uh, k alpha infinity is in lp prime so knowing this because of how we define k alpha just recall uh, how we define the um the kernel and uh, an integral and so knowing how is the risk potential then uh, we have that uh, number one is a convolution of an l1 function with a lp and two is a convolution of a uh, lp prime with an lp so both integrals converge absolutely okay okay so let's make a quick uh, sketch of how to carry on with the second part so uh, we have this uh, integral dy over absolute value y n minus alpha and with a change of variable uh, r then we can obtain a, a constant and this integral that goes from zero to epsilon and this will be equal now constant that depends on n and alpha multiplied by epsilon to a uh, to alpha okay okay so then uh, using this uh, we can bound the uh, first uh, kernel that was uh, that we call it one um, and using the proposition that we uh, that we used before that bound a uh, a convolution with mf multiplied by norm okay so using that with this we can bound the first um, convolution that was k alpha not convolution f okay okay for the second uh, kernel then uh, with uh, and using Helder's inequality then we can bound it as a constant norm fp and then we have a, a uh, integral that is uh, similar to this one that we use in the first kernel and we can bound it in the same way it's a radial integral and so we can obtain a similar bound that depends of a constant of alpha and n e to an exponent and multiplied by uh, the norm of f uh, norm, norm p okay okay so we have these two bounds for the first integral and for the second uh, not not integral the, the kernel okay so um, now we will try to minimize the sum of both bounds and so we will fix epsilon such that uh, c epsilon alpha m fx is equal to c epsilon and p prime minus n plus alpha okay so if we use that well that n over p prime minus n is equal to minus n p okay then uh, we will have that uh, cmf is equal to c epsilon minus np norm fp so combining all this uh, we can bound i alpha under on the risk potential uh, by um, using the all the bounds and the, and the equality 
and we will finally get um, this value theta okay theta is equal to alpha p over n alpha is between 0 and 1 okay and this exponent uh, appear um, when uh, we uh, make <laughs> well, exactly appear here this alpha p over n exponent that then will uh, be with all the mfs here and then just to have a better notation we just define this theta okay so if we take uh, LQ norm to do all this then we will have uh, okay this will, will be okay a um, here has to be a constant C that I forgot C it comes from here the same norm and then we will have norm Q of MF okay and that will be equal to the constant C again F P theta and now we're just taking out the exponent and changing here one minus minus theta q okay and here we will use um what we called before um hardly little word theorem to get uh this the final bound and uh, c this c is a constant that depends on alpha p and n and uh, recall that here uh, we have 1 minus theta 1 minus theta multiplied by p by q and uh, that's equal to uh, 1 minus alpha p n over n okay multiplied by q Okay, we can say the, we had the definition here of p n, and this is equal to uh, p. And if you um, pass uh, the p to the other side, dividing and the q to the other side, we'll finally get one over q is equal to one over p minus alpha over n and that's what was stated in the in the in the theorem okay so this is a an application of uh, hardly little word um, function um, hardly little word maximal function okay and uh, We've been here using interpolation theorems all through uh, these uh, these these theorems. Okay.